Hey there, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a website, then you should definitely check out Squarespace and more on that later. All right, in this video, I'll be looking at the low light or high ISO performance of the Lumix S5 Mark II and compare it with the Sony a7 IV and the Canon R6 Mark II. Now, generally at the beginning of my video, I like to explain all my testing parameters and how this works, but what I decided to do was try to save you all a bunch of times because I've explained this in so many previous videos. So here are all the details. If you'd like to check them out, hit pause and you can read through them, but I don't wanna waste any more of your time. Now, one thing that I have updated is that I got adapters for all of these cameras so I can use the same lens. So for all these cameras, I use the same lens, which was the Sigma Art 28 millimeter F 1.4 EF lens, and I use manual focus. So the same optics were on all the cameras to compare the detail and sharpness and all that kind of stuff. So even though this video is about low light, I like to include lower ISO ranges because I am going through the process of doing all these tests, but I also like to see about the general noise in all of the images. One thing I do wanna mention here is about noise reduction because it's different in all of these cameras. Now you can control the noise reduction in the R6 Mark II and the S5 Mark II, but not in the Sony cameras. And there's almost infinite possibilities of combinations <laughs> for testing all this stuff out. And that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. So what I decided to do was just use the default settings in all these cameras. I made a detailed video testing out the in-camera noise reduction of the R6 Mark II and have some recommendations about that. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave that video linked down below. There are two different types of noise. There is luminoise and chroma noise. First of all, luminoise or luminance is kind of the noise pattern that you're used to. That's where you have changes in the brightness of the image. And so it's, as I said, kind of what you're used to. And the other kind of noise is what's known as chroma noise or chrominance. And that has to do with changes of color. And in my opinion, this is definitely a lot uglier. So I'll be referring to both luminoise and chroma noise throughout looking at these comparisons and samples. So if you're just tuning in the channel, you probably don't know, but I am fairly new to the Panasonic system. The S5 II is the first Panasonic camera that I've owned and used, but I did go out and shoot with it and got some great footage, and I was really happy with the image quality that comes out of this camera. So if you're interested in seeing that, go check out my first impressions video. I'll leave that link down below. Now, I noticed that the colors outside looked great. I was, as I said, really happy with the image quality, but when I was testing this out in the studio, I noticed it was a really heavy green color shift. And generally when I do these tests, I don't use any LUTs and I just adjust contrast and saturation, but the color was pretty heavily shifted towards the green. So what I decided to do in this video is I used the technical conversion LUT on all of these cameras. And when I put it on the S5II's V-Log footage, I noticed it fixed the color shift. So taking a look here at the ungraded image of these two cameras and then applying the technical LUTs to them. And then what I did was I just adjusted the contrast and saturation to get the images as close as possible. So I didn't touch the colors at all, but the technical conversion LUT for V-Log definitely adjusted out that green color shift and it made a huge difference. First, let's compare the S5 II against the A7 IV. The S5 II has a dual base ISO of 640 and 4000, whereas the A7 IV has a base ISO of 800. The S5 II has a 6K oversampled 4K in the mode that I'm testing here, and you can also shoot 6K, but I'm delivering this in a 4K timeline. The A7 IV is a 7K oversampled 4K, but you should probably expect to see similar detail and sharpness between these two cameras because of that oversampling. In the lower ISO range, the a7 IV is significantly cleaner, and maybe some of this has to do with the fact that the S5 II noise reduction is off by default, but there's definitely a lot of chroma noise in the S5 II, even at the lower ISO range. At ISO uh, 4000, there's definitely some cleaning up by the S5 Mark II, which happens when it hits that second base ISO, but it's still noisier, both in terms of chroma and luminoise on the S5 II. The S5 II does get pretty gnarly at 12,800 and above, while the a7 IV definitely hangs in there in those higher ISO values. Overall, I would say the a7 IV is cleaner at every ISO uh, over the S5 II, which is really no surprise to me. I've always been seriously impressed with the noise performance of the a7 IV, mainly due to the 7K oversample and probably some clever noise reduction. Before we get on to looking at how the S5 II compares with the R6 Mark II, I need to take a moment to talk about this video sponsor, which is Squarespace. If you're a creative, a content creator, or a small business owner, you definitely need a website. Believe me, you really do. I'm really excited to have Squarespace sponsor this video because I've been personally using Squarespace for years. Your website can be as simple as a landing spot for people to find your contact info and social media, but it's a great place to show off your photos, videos, portfolio, artwork, etc. They even let you host videos directly and there's no need to link a YouTube or Vimeo video. It looks a lot more professional and seamless. It's simple to set up a website with their amazing templates. They make it super easy and anyone can do it pretty quickly. They have a lot of their cool stuff like the ability to set up an online store, schedule appointments, or have a member area. You should definitely head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Josh Satin to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Link in description.
Now on to the comparison of the S52 with the R6 Mark II. The R6 Mark II has a base ISO of 800. Now, I do want to point out that the R6 II really does benefit from overexposing the image, and the S52 might as well, but I didn't test that yet. Now, to be fair and to keep everything consistent for this video, I just used the manufacturer's recommended exposure on all of these cameras, so it would be a fair fight. Now, I will experiment with the S52, and if I find that I prefer a different exposure, I'll report that in a later video. If you're curious about the R6 Mark II and how I recommend overexposing it and why and some test images and all that kind of stuff, check out the video that I made about that. I'll leave that video linked down below as well. In the lower ISO range, the S52 has less luminoids but more chrominoids. A lot of this probably comes from the fact that the R62's built-in noise reduction takes care of the chrominoids by default. Now, throughout the ISO range, the S52 definitely has more chrominoids though, and at 3200, the R6 Mark II cleans up, and up to 5000, they are pretty similar in terms of luminoids, but of course, the chrominoids continues to be worse on the S52. Starting at 6400 and up, the R6 Mark II definitely looks nicer to me. It might be from the noise reduction. As you can see, there's some smoothing and loss of detail. But right out of camera, I would say that the um, R6 Mark II has less noise in the higher ISO range. But the S52 definitely holds on to a lot of detail. Overall, at the manufacturer's recommended exposure, the S52 is a bit cleaner in terms of luminoids, but worse than chrominoids compared with the R6 Mark II. All right, so let's wrap some of this stuff up. Well, the S52 does okay, but it's really not a low light specialist in any way. I was a little bit disappointed with the amount of chrominoids that was in the S52. Now, Gerald Undone did a bunch of testing in his review video with noise reduction, so definitely go check that out if you'd like to see some more details about that. But one thing is that it's super nice that you can turn off the noise reduction in the S52, unlike in the Sony cameras. It's really nice to have that ability because generally speaking, you should turn off the noise reduction in the camera and then apply noise reduction in post for the most control and and best results. The S52 was pretty clean in the lower ISOs, which made me really happy, but not as clean as the A7IV. As I said, I'm seriously impressed with the A7IV in terms of the noise level. And one thing that was a real benefit for me was that I really liked the skin tones out of the S52 once I applied the technical LUT. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider hitting subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much to Squarespace, and thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.